Hello, good evening, and a very warm welcome to Rangers Radio. The King and Queen of Rangers Radio. The Charles and Camilla, our bridge man and our Linda. Evening, Charles people. And Camilla. <laughs> evening, <laughs> evening, Oxford. Evening, bridge man. Evening to all the listeners. I hope you're all keeping well. <laughs> Charles and Camilla, that's shocking. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I just say a, a big good evening for yourself, Oxford, and the techie team in the background, and of course, Linda. Good evening to yourself. And to all the Rangers fans listening in all over the world, everybody enjoyed the game. I really enjoyed it. It was a very exciting match. Everybody care. Good evening and welcome to Rangers Radio. Yes, it was a... Life is a roller coaster, Linda. And that certainly was yesterday, wasn't it? Yes, Ox. um, The blood pressure tablets were were well out of the, the box, that's for sure. Aye, it was. It was a roller coaster and... They don't have put us through the millocks. They really, they really do. Yes, just to let everybody know, I've got a, a scoop for anybody that listens to Rangers Radio. I've got a scoop uh, concerning uh, things that happened with one of the pundits. But the, the story's in three parts, so if you don't mind, we'll build it up. If that's all right with you, Linda. Sounds exciting. Yes, uh, a scoop. <laughs> you have to picture the scene, but I'll build up. How are you, Bridget? You recovered? Right, he's only going to get two warnings a night and then he's off the show, Linda. Come in, Bridge. Yes, Come in. That's your first official warning, Bridge. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched I, I watched uh, some of the players on the pitch yesterday getting away with absolute murder with their tackles. Uh, and, you know, the, the referee just carried on. That's so. I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm getting away with murder. Is that what you're telling me? No, we're telling you, you're not going to be with Butter One, maybe that's a yellow, the next one's a red and get off. I love it, That's I what we're it. telling you. Brilliant, right, just uh, brilliant. Right, well, right. There's only one place we can start, London, and that's the first 30 seconds. Run me through it. Oh, goodness. Um, well, all, all I can imagine is that um, is that Tav is, is caught in two minds. Um, it's a big punt up the park from Joe Hart and if you watch it on our TV when they show you the pitch view ox, um, the wind catches the ball and it does take it over but I think he was probably aiming for that side anyway because they were, they were definitely targeting Tav you, you, you could see that it looks to me as if he's caught in two minds and then he decides I better just try and thump this out and by the time he's done that Maeda's in look at it's a it's a it's a terrible goal to lose from our, our point of view, Ox, but there is a, tad, t- a touch of fortune about it. Oh, it was me. a fluke, Linda. It it's a fluke. fluke. Absolutely. Oh. I'm trying to be a wee bit balanced here because <laughs> I'm not trying to let Tav off the hook with this because no. he should he should have dealt with Ox, but it was very fortuitous. Yes. My my problem with it, Bridge, was that Tav didn't move. He didn't react. And for, listen, that's my, my three, if you like, that's the trilogy of our team where the experience lies between John Lundster, Connor Goals and Tav and backed up with a goal. You know, it was never a goalie's ball. Initially it looked as if it might be coming down the throat in the centre half, but the wind moved it. Goes goes to the right, uh, goes to the right, and Tav hadn't acted, hadn't moved. So you gave yourself too much to do, Bridge. And then in lied the problem. Yeah, well it looked certainly looked like that. I think the the wind caught the ball uh, and put a bit of pace on it uh, and I don't think I don't think Tab was actually expecting the ball anywhere near him to be perfectly honest with you Right, and, oh, uh, right. well what, we need to talk about that bridge, right so uh, the team got in the pitch and the day of warm up the wind was there the day before yesterday and everybody should have known so, so part of that warm up being seen where the ball goes, where it blows and knowing that, right, OK, when it gets here, it's going to take off. That's what you do as an amateur. Never mind 
a professional, experienced pro who's captain in Glasgow Rangers, mate. Yeah, I understand that. All I'm saying is that by the look of the ball from where I was, uh, the ball's travelling towards and then all of a sudden it starts to veer and the wee guy is tramping down the left wing and, and Tab doesn't know whether he's after Martha, to be perfectly honest with you. I think he thinks that Golson's going to come over and get it or indeed the goalkeeper's going to come and get it and it was ended up left to him because the ball was moving away from the centre of the defence area and out to the court closer to the wing than they had the old inside left position as we were attacking it. But seriously, Tab looked as if he had fallen asleep. That's just what it looked like. He didn't disagree. react properly at all. And yeah. by the way, I thought he was awful unlucky because he was going to put the ball out of the park as any uh, decent defender would do. Just clear it, get rid of it. Uh, and all of a sudden, the wee guy puts his leg out and it hits his leg and goes in the net. What can you say to that? You can't argue with that, really. Aye. I think the goal scorer was doing his ricochet. wonder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so it just sucked to the oxygen out of And obviously, one, one that any ball sport is a very difficult, and outdoors is very difficult to uh, play. And look, we, we never got to grips with it in the first half. We struggled, and as, we, as the game went on, so did they. But we'll talk about us. So the oxygen and the energy and the it just, you could see it just it got sucked out the stadium and it got sucked out the team. And the start just went from bad to worse, London. Yeah, I would agree, Ox. It was an absolute sucker punch. Because I think before the game, you know, you're talking about, you're talking about it on the show, what you're talking about it to friends and family. And we're just saying, don't give any goals away. Don't make any real daft mistakes like we have done in these fixtures so often over the, the last few years. And we also thought it would be lovely, Ox, if we could score first because it then put a bit of pressure on them. So that, everything, all of that just went out, out the window in those first 30 seconds. And, and I don't think we recovered from it in that first half. I really don't. I think there was two things, but I just, there was obviously the goal. Goals always change matches, uh, in my view. You know, they gain momentum and they sometimes gain confidence, bizarrely. Because you would think it wouldn't change anything, but it does. Anybody who's played the game knows that. But also, the win's a factor. So you've got to, the, the games, when you're playing, it was swirling, but bizarrely, we were against the wind in the first half. You've got to play differently, Bridge. Especially as the defender, because where we were, the ball was coming to you and the ball was coming and talking to you because of the wind. So you can't play nice, intricate passes. You've got to be sensible, Bridge Man. Eh? 100%, yes. And that's exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, be sensible. And as Linda mentioned earlier, we've been saying it for a long, long time about Rangers. They really need to make sure they don't give the ball away or allow the ball to run through them because that's exactly what happened. It ran through them, but it through the midfield. OK, it was a goalkeeper just pumped the ball low. He, he hit a low one rather than a high one. And, he, and a lot of the wind just picked it up and, and went, went there. So uh, we, for some reason or other, defended miserably, both the goalkeeper and the two centre, centre halves and Tav, sleepy time Tav. That's what we were talking, that's what we were saying. Uh, and that's what we were calling, sleepy time Tav. But... Uh, uh, look, I showed you how dangerous the wind was because at the end of the game, I think uh, five of the six goals were scored at that right. end. We'll get, we'll get to that. So, wonder we, 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 we couldn't pass the ball. We're, uh, we're two wide men. I, I, I didn't think they were great at all. In the midfield, Tom Lawrence was wasteful with the ball. Uh, I would say that Diamand and Lundstrom, but at least there was a, a lot of endeavour there, but their passing was, wasn't it great. Uh, there was times where Diamandi showed that he, he's definitely got ability. Uh, Big Sterling was arguably the best player in the first 20 minutes going down the left. He's going by the winger, but with nothing because we couldn't keep the ball under. No, and it was could... like deja vu for the last game at Ibrooks. Yeah, totally agree, Ox. As you say, we, we couldn't string any passes together. We were struggling to get anything going. We never created any chances. Um, as you say, um, 
I, I know they, they were struggling. Um, we just seem to we weren't doing the, the right things. We were making them look a lot better than than what you, what than what they are. I know that you know we've got to acknowledge that they actually handled the conditions probably better. Although as you say, they, they did start to struggle a wee bit. But we started to give the ball away in our in, in our defensive third, and actually you'll probably come on to it. But you know they. We, we, we gifted them chances by not being able to make a 10-yard pass and not picking up our players. I, I don't know how often we get into these games and I don't know what the team talk is, but surely to goodness in the box, you've got to pick up their dangerous men. Yeah, that's, a, that's exactly what you've got to do. I just we, we didn't do it. Carry on, Bridge. No, I was just going to say, that's exactly what they're supposed to do. But I, I don't know how many games we've watched now, and, 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 and even under Clement, they, somehow or other, they don't quite start without that fire in the belly. Uh, that, well, they, get, they get that, you know, as they did uh, at half-time, maybe by the manager leathering them in, in the dressing room. But the, the truth is, <coughs> it was quite, quite poor, really. Uh, and it made, dare say, they thought they were the greatest team in the whole world and 2 0 up against Rangers at Ibrox, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, but I think that, anybody that, knows that the next goal was a big goal if it was for us, the momentum because of the win. But anyway, let's work through it. So we were wasteful in midfield. Stick to the game. Don't go ahead of me, your place. So we we were we were huffing and puffing and we were dreadful and they weren't the great, but they were they looked more dangerous than us. And uh, then with the boy we uh, Tavik sleepy again, he used bridges coming across, they went for a corner it wasn't cleared, they came in and went in and then there was a VAR decision in 34 minutes, Lyndon, you're thinking oh, oh, here we go, yeah Yeah, yeah, as soon as you see that going to VAR your, your stomach turns and you're, you're thinking, you know there's, there's a big decision and you're just hoping that, you know that the referee, you know, makes the right decision and you know, you're looking at it, Ox, and it comes into the box and, you know, you see it hitting his elbow and, and you know yourself, Ox, that, it, that it's going to be given. It, it's harsh, but in the in, in present day rules, um, it, it's a penalty. I don't know whether, you know, Connor is trying to, to you know, he's trying to tuck his arm in or what, but I, I don't know why he doesn't need to be more forceful in going to try and header the ball ox. And, and as I say, I'm, I'm, I don't want to be overly harsh, but I, I do but I do think that he could have done a lot better. And if you listen to Rangers TV and you listen to John Brown's commentary on it, John Brown does not miss him. Yeah, it should have, I mean, look, we know the ball's moving and we get the wind and that and it might have took, it took a nick but it looks, I've only seen it back and uh, I've not seen it today in the cold light of day but uh, <clears throat> look all I will say is in my opinion if that had happened in the other box I'd have been looking for a penalty that's all I'll say Bridge? Yeah it's definitely at his arm or his elbow however you want to see it and it may be uh, shall we say clumsy? But I don't think if that if that same guy that has got, got the first goal actually got his head to that ball and it skimmed over his head and that may have just put it right on <laughs> right targeting uh, his 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 arm because he didn't know where the ball was after that skim past that skim past him. Uh, so as far as I was concerned, he was doing what he was trying to do. But unfortunately, if, if you could get get the arms out in any, any way, shape, or form, and it gets hot. Going to get a penalty against you, and that's what happened. So yeah. I'll take it. In, I'll take it in the chin with that one. You know, so I've been looking for a penalty, and I think I'm, I'm in the John Brown camp. Wonder, I think he's got to go and head it. But yeah. if it's moved, he's been caught out. Could you argue he's been unlucky? But centre half, middle of the goal, your job's to head the ball. Yeah, he's um for a centre half, he's. You know, he's not the best header of the ball and it's quite worrying when you're a centre half. And, you know, Connors had these good games, we understand that. But I don't, he should have scored at the other end, Docs. I'd forgotten about that when I said there wasn't any chances. He ah. had a great chance, didn't he? Ah, I don't even think he got his head on it, did he? No, it was his, his shoulder. shoulder. I think it was his shoulder, yeah. Ah, you know, so, 
Uh, listen, he could be going through a, 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 a spell of uh, confidence, but look, <clears throat> uh, Connor, Connor Golson yesterday and yesterday's performance, where uh, we've got two years uh, left in these Rangers contracts, and I don't know if he'll be our centre half for two many years because look, age does the age catches up with people. Uh, it's difficult once you lose that. It's no half a yard at that level, but it just, it's a quarter of a yard, isn't it? Well, absolutely, absolutely. You know, but uh, by the way, uh, that, even as, uh, as much as, much as uh, I say, it's obviously a quarter of a yard, and that level of football, quarter of a yard's massive. Aye. You know, and obviously, but let's also be fair, it's difficult conditions for the defenders, the goalkeeper, etc., when you're defending into that one, like that one, the pot. But I've seen that back and seen it live and thinking, right, okay, yeah, he's made a mistake because he's got to come and header it. You know, when you, yeah. when you see it, and that's that's the issue. He's got to come and header it all day long. Is that, I take it that's what John Brown was saying, was it? Yeah, I think it's it's, it's his responsibility, Golson. You know, he's not. It's not <clears> the first <throat> time he's made any errors. Look, Ox, I'm not. I don't want to come on here and totally bash players, right? Because there was there's a positive side to the game in the in the in the. We've not got that off yet. We've not got that off yeah, yet. <laughs> exactly right. We've, you've got to just. You, you can only you know critique what you're seeing here. And I don't want to sound as if I'm bashing. And on the other hand, I don't want to shy away from criticising people, right? I'm trying to be balanced when I'm looking at things. And Conor Golson has got to take responsibility in that situation. And he's got to go and win that header. And uh, it's not the first time he's made mistakes. And it probably won't be the last. But in that situation, um, on, on RTV, John Brown just said exactly what I said there. He has got to go and win the header. And forget about everything else. Right. Yes, that ball does not happen. Anyway, so you're right, there was a chance. That was maybe a chance. I think it was for a tab. I think it was for a corner minute. Um, we had a uh, Diamante corner minute. And he could have yeah. come in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the first when we, we, we moved up and threatened them. So we go 2 nothing down. And, um, well, the, the, uh, people are disappointed. The, Everybody's disappointed at home. The fans are disappointed in the stadium. Um, we, we huffed and puffed. We got a chance before half time. Do you think Silver should have scored, Linda? Yeah, I think he's got to score, Ox. And, and it's another time when our, our forward players don't get a clean hit in the ball. It's quite incredible. Mm-hmm. Just before half time, minute. Right, yeah. Yeah. Just before half time. So, we're 2 0 down, Bridge Man. Uh, we know we need the next goal. Uh, the game's changed. We know we've made changes. We know we're looking for changes. The man- manager made one. Um, I think a lot of people on the ground would have made more. Eh? At that time, yeah, we, were, well, we, were, we thought it was going to be maybe two or three. Uh, two at least, you know, that's what we were thinking. But no, the game is due. He's, he's done it and, and uh, we get on with it. Just get on with it. Is that what you thought, Linda? Yeah, I, I thought he could have, he, as Ock said, Bridgie, he could have changed a number of players. But, um, number, yeah. but How many were you taking off at half-time, Linda? What did you say, Ock? Sorry? How many were you taking off at half-time? How many players? <laughs> he couldn't have subbed the whole team. Back with the goalie. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had two left on. It was Suter and Sterling. That was about for me. Hi. And Big Butler. That was it. You know, yeah. but, uh, You're not far away there. You're not far away there because it, it was pretty poor. But then, <clears throat> the, wind, the, the weather's a fantastic leveler as far as that's concerned. So oh. the, the advantage of playing at Ibrox uh, wasn't for us in the first half. It just wasn't for us. No. So the game turned around. We brought on Seema. Um, and we, we started growing into the game a bit and we started putting them under pressure. And uh, obviously, we know their tactic. Anybody breaks away from them, they slow them down. They, they need this player fouls. And, you know, you've seen that with the fouls yesterday. I think it was 24 to 10, you know. Yeah. Um, and how that boy Johnston was the sent off is, is a mystery to me. And then okay. even they change the rules. Uh, they change the rules. Carter Vickers kicks the ball away right in front of the referee. He doesn't get booked. And that should have been, he could have been sent off as well for a second, you know, yeah. So yeah. I don't understand some of the things that happened. 
Right, so we're huffing and puffing. I didn't enjoy Big Silver's performance yesterday, but there was a moment he got his back into the game. He went into the box. We're, we're pushing and pushing. We're starting to dare under the, the cosh. They're, not, they're looking like us in the first half. Bambi and Icelander. And then he's brought down and booked. And booked uh, for a simulation. Yeah? yeah. So the referee missed their penalty. He books the guy for diving. Has to go too far. And he got that one running as well because he had to change his whole decision, Linda. Yeah, and Ox, that this is the kind of thing that we we thought that you know VAR was going to be. It was brought in to to basically help the referees with. It's arguable whether um, Beaton should have seen you know both of them, but I, I don't think so. I think the angle of it is it's. It said it might have been quite difficult for him, but at the end of the day, and again, when it goes to go, when you see it going to bar, you think, wait a minute here, there's there's a decision. And Silva's reaction was that he was adamant he was fouled, and it's difficult because, as you said, he, he, some of his performance he does go to ground quite easily, Ox. And sometimes when you get a reputation like that, the referee doesn't give you the benefit of the doubt. However, when you see it. He clearly kicked. He's clearly kicked on just on his shin, and it and it's a penalty. You know what it's like to shake off a reputation, Linda. <laughs> I thought I'd already done that. <laughs> <laughs> he's awful, Bridge, isn't he? <laughs> Glad right. <it's> you. <laughs> right. What I will say is, uh, some of the times when Silva was done, he was filled. His shot was. Uh, he was maybe held or he, he, there was a foul. I don't think that for that it was even frustrating our, our own support. It's no the fouls, it's the antics. It's the antics. It takes me back when Borna started with Gerard. How do we know we got up? Yeah? Yeah. We think you're hurt and you got up. No. So that then you're playing into their hands. So let's be honest, Bridge, that Stonewall penalty, if it would be for Bar, we're not getting it. In fact, he's well, been booked. No, you're absolutely right, Paul. And, and uh, I, like, it looked like a dive uh, when you see it first time. And I went, oh, no. And then I thought, first of all, my, my, my mind says, that's a penalty. And then uh, immediately within my seconds, I thought, no, no, it, it looks like a dive, you know. And then she would have come back and said, hey, you're not getting the yellow, the yellow cards rescinded and it's a penalty. I thought, yeah, done, sir. That's exactly what I thought. But I've watched that a dozen times in replays on Rangers Rangers TV and it, and it definitely was a penalty. And Linda's right. He did catch him. Caught, caught him in two places. He hit his, uh, I think he hit his shin or just, just below the knee and above the knee. Uh, so he actually caught him uh, and, uh, and then he went down. So it was quite right to go down in that sense. Uh, and maybe could could help it. Maybe he just he knew he was getting he knew he hit him down. Yeah, maybe someday, maybe someday will come on and explain it to us. But Linda, how's that no a second booking then? I know the double jeopardy for the sending Absolutely. off. Absolutely. But no for a second booking, yeah. Yeah. But, but if, it, if a yellow, if it's a yellow card for what, they, what, uh, what he thinks uh, Silva did, then if it's no, you know what I mean. If it is a foul, not all, okay. We all know sometimes fouls aren't all yellow cards. Yes. In the box, and yes. taking somebody above the above the knee. Take them out. Is a second it. yellow, second yeah. yellow. But yeah. maybe I don't. Well, but they've changed the rules. They might have changed them last week. No, told it. <laughs> <laughs> no, they wouldn't right. do that. No, <laughs> they wouldn't do that. So listen, we also know that a certain club is breaking it. They've sent a letter. Who oh, have sent a letter? Right? They've sent a letter about uh, the penalty decision. Mm. Well, just go back to what's happening in the media today because. We know what's happening in the media, Linda, because what they've got is one of the biggest scandals, Brecken, what's happening with settlements, etc. Yes. And then we know what's happening in the Scottish media. Everything's going to be placements about different stories. Deflect, 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 because there's a big story, Brecken. Yeah, yeah time that, is absolutely. everything. So tell me about this uh, thing they're writing about then. What on earth are they writing I about? I've wrote a letter about the penalty kick, yeah. So About the one we were discussing there? Yes. Yeah, yes. OK. Not the one. Yeah. Not their one. They're not writing no. a letter about their one, no? No. Their penalty. No, it's OK then. No, but they, 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 they wanted VAR took away, they were delighted they had it. So the, what they want VAR is to give them all the decisions, Bridge, and they don't <laughs> want it on the other end. That's what they don't want. <laughs> but, 
they want, what, uh, see, I'll, can I just add a wee bit to your words? What they want is they want VAR to justify their decisions. That's what they want. Yes. Right, so what we get the penalty on that, and I've got to say, uh, I dog my hat to Tavernier because Tavernier had been shocking yesterday. Shocking. Mm. And he stood up and took that penalty and put it back in the net. It took some cojones, Linda. Yeah, it did, Ox. That and, and coupled with the fact that he'd missed the last two. And um, you're standing and you're thinking, oh, please, please score. You know, I just thought, I didn't want, you know, you. You want you wonder if he's going to give it to somebody else, but I didn't expect him to. We were talking about this during the week, and we were saying if we get, if he gets a penalty, do we want him to take it? And I, and I for one did say yes. And I know that people are saying that um, that Dessers might have offered to take the penalty. Um, I think folk at the game maybe saw that more than what we did on TV. Um, but no, there was no way that he was going to he not take the responsibility of the penalty. And, and I've, you've got to see Ox, it was a fantastic penalty. Hi, obviously he was listening. His wife must have told him we put it in the top <laughs> corner. Oh, she keeps telling him that, no? I can't say it because of laughter. That's <laughs> That was a kind of discussion that was going on. <laughs> well, well done, Mrs. Tavi. Well, well done, Mrs. Tavi. <laughs> Keep doing right. that. <laughs> so we get the penalty. We get the penalty and you can just see the energy and the the oxygen coming back into the team in this, the, the crowd Lundera. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the just, it, it just gave us a lift. To, you know, just because after half time you're thinking um, if we can get an early goal, but the, the penalty didn't come, I think it was at the 59th, 60th minute and you're just thinking that we need to just get ourselves back in and the, it was just, you thought, you know, can can we go on and get an equaliser and, and maybe even get pinch the win, Ox? 55 minutes we get the penalty, yeah. Yeah, so 55. In, in reality, then that's about five minutes the time they mess about. So we get the penalty, half scores, and then there's another major top point in the game. So we then get an equaliser. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Tom Lawrence, there's a tussle in the middle of the park, there's a coming together. Uh, if I'm honest, in real time, I thought it was a foul. But uh, 10 minutes later, we put the ball in the net. <laughs> yeah, and uh, help me out, Linda. Help me out. Uh, Why is that choked off? Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about passages of play, aren't you? And when you, when you watch it back, there's at least Two occasions, I think that they touched the ball after that. They they, they blocked the pit, pit, the attempted cross from the right from us just after we break forward, and then there's another break in play as well. So the argument about that is how many how many passages of play do you take it back for the foul? Um, so I can see how. Um, it's it's harsh on us now. I don't know if that the ref watch that you see on Sky and that they did say that they can see why it, it, it was disallowed. But I've got to say, yeah, I've never felt so deflated when that get chalked off because oh my goodness, and uh, there would only have been one winner after that. If we'd get that equaliser at that point, Ox. I know hindsight's a wonderful thing, but the momentum was all with us. And um, I think that sucked the life out of us as well. Well, I, I, well, we, no, we, we kept going. So we're, we're, I'm baffled because look, we've been involved with football for a long time, and I think the way it's gone, we don't know the rules anymore, Bridge. Well, you struggle with them, don't you? You, you do. But just as Linda described it there, uh, it could be two or three, maybe even four passages of passages of play between the tackle on the, the, the midfielder and. Uh, yeah. And, and the ball going in the net and the referee making that decision or getting told about that decision, whatever the case may be. As far as I'm concerned, when they when that ball goes 50 yards away from the spot where the, that, the, the kick took place or the free kick took place, uh, it's gone. It's gone because you're what, easily two, three, four, five, ten seconds possibly, uh, maybe even 30 seconds by the time it's done. And I cannot believe that in this day and age in Scotland, they're going to go back and replay a move or give a decision on a move that the referees either ignored never, or maybe never seen it and waiting for Wait, bar or whatever. When you hear this, this is going to make you even feel better. Right. 
I don't know if this is correct, but it's a frequently asked question about VAR. Yeah, but it's from the Premier League in England too, obviously play a different game for us. But this is what they say about VAR, right? The VAR will only check the attacking possession based on the lead to a penalty or goal. The starting point will be limited to the immediate phase. The VAR may not go back to when the attacking team gained possession. The VAR will consider the ability of the opposing defence to reset in momentum of the attack. Did everybody behind the ball, wasn't there? Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier there. There was definitely two occasions where they had time to actually... Well, they did the block, the, the, block, the initial cross. I don't know if it was... If it was Seema that tried to put the ball across at first locks and it came back to him and then he did, he managed to get it by the, the first man. So there was there was two instances there where they were able to reset. So aye, it was um, it was a bit of a blow. And is it fair to say that all all of that is questionable? Is it is it fair to say that? I would say it's highly questionable. Well, what I'll uh, say, Bridges, as I said, we've done football for a long time and. We don't know the rules. We don't know the rules anymore. So, can, can just remind me then, the Perry, what was the actual decision? <clears throat> Did he go to VAR? I can't even remember this. Did he go to VAR? I went and then, to VAR and then come yeah. back to... And they come back, back to his free kick? A free kick, yeah. Wow. No, I'll be honest with you, but I'll give you an honest assessment. I thought it was a coming together. Yeah. And it, it, it maybe been a free kick 60% of the time. Yeah. But however... The referee was right next to it. It's going to be clear and obvious error. So he yeah. got that wrong again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the play goes on. And as Linda says, it's minutes and minutes and minutes. It wasn't a direct play, wasn't it? That was right. You're right. But, um, but however, look. So we're just looking for consistency. And we'll see what happens going forward. Because that'll be interesting. Yeah. So that's another goal. Rangers have got chopped off when they're playing that mob. So that's, in the last two seasons, that's Morelos' goal chopped off at their place. Uh, who else? That was roof school chopped off at our place, first, yeah. and that's and that's uh, big Cyril Dessers goal chopped off yesterday. So that's three goals chopped off, and baffling decisions. Yeah, baffling. Yeah. Things to the high heavens. <laughs> right. So so think. they've got a problem with that. I don't think so. Right. So we've got the we thought we'd equalise her, we didn't, and everybody's a bit flat again, Linda. But yeah. the team, to their credit. And let's be honest, it's harsh as we were on the first half. It's harsh as we were on the first half. We've got to say that the done is proud in the second half, and I thought a lot of that came from Seymour. And I heard all there yesterday about Scott Wright, and I thought he was spot on. He was the only one. But however, we then keep keeps going under. Yeah. And he gets another chance. And this time, they couldn't chop it off, could they? <laughs> no, probably looking for every avenue. I did. I did think that um, when that goal was this loud, it, the players kept going. Uh, as watching fans, also, I don't know about the stadium, but I felt that it kind of sucked the life out of us a wee bit. Uh, that was kind of what I meant earlier there. But you're right. All, all credit to the players because they did keep going. And then I think it was was it the eighty six minute. Aye, and, and you knew there would be uh, eight to ten minutes added on. Yeah, so there's still yeah. fifteen to go. Yeah. Yeah. And, and credit Big Seema because he actually does strike the ball quite well and it took a, a quite quite a big deflection and it was the sort of luck that we don't really normally get in these games, Ox. And um, when it went in, the noise was incredible. I, I mean, it must have been even, you know, the noise at the stadium, but the roar was just fantastic. Yeah, so 86 minutes, we're back in the game, you're saying, right, We'll get another chance here. We can now win this. Because yeah. there's about 15 to go. Well, it was about another 30 seconds, Bridge, and the life was sucked to us. We switched off again. The boys <laughs> in our midfield area were we'll experienced players, goals and Tavernier, uh, all around about the, the, uh, the, their left or right. The boy cut in, there's nobody near him. He plays a pass inside. Uh, Suter and Sterling, who I actually thought we were two best players yesterday, apart for the substitutes, apart for the substitutes, right? Um, uh, they they won the great, uh, and there's a shot, and for me, Big Jack should have saved it. But well, he made some brilliant saves in the first half, and goalkeepers, if they make a small error, it's usually a goal bridge. But for me, he should have saved it. 
Now, I, have, I, I never watched that 15 times at NLI, which I normally do. I just thought uh, the guy managed to get the, get the shot in and it, it just beat everybody. It went through a great Rangers player's legs, uh, based on what I saw anyway. I thought Sterling, Sterling was lost. Uh, we were trying, he was trying to tackle him, but not tackle him because it was in the box, blah, 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 you know. And very, trying to be very careful. And before you know it, the boss threw his legs. Uh, the guy puts it. There wasn't any the best shot in the whole world. A uh, shot tr- looked at to me it was kind of trundling, but we had a better pace on it. And of course, unfortunately, he was in the wrong position. The goalkeeper was in the wrong position. Uh, right under him for me. Yeah. Wonder. Yeah. yeah, right under him, Ox. But I don't know how. I mean, the guy, the Celtic player, either. He's, you know, how the ball gets through him. I don't know why. Unbelievable, not, isn't it? Why are we not tight on him? He, 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 there's two Rangers players in him. You know, and I know that, that, that you know the other the player who passed him. I, I don't know who it was. He was allowed to drive forward, and it's you know there's there's quite a few errors you know from several players and in, in that home you know move experienced that players, yeah. Oh, absolutely, we give the ball away. We don't really chase back, and then you, you but he's, there's still a lot to be done there, Rox. And then you find him, and he and he, the ball goes through to him. It's a it's a channel through to him. And 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 it, and it did come through the two the two Rangers players, but Jack will be disappointed with that. You right, can't get away fair. from it. That's fair. And the funny thing was, I've a long way, Sterling and um, Sterling and, and big suitor in my opinion, Butland and was one of the ones that were, were better players on the day, uh, bar the substitutes. So we're three to three to three two down, and you know there's still about twelve minutes to go. And you're saying, right, we need a bit of luck. Well, we didn't get a bit of luck. We got an absolute stunner, Linda. Bit like yourself. <laughs> oh, thanks, Ox. <laughs> now, I know you're, now, now I know you're laughing. Um, dear Abby, and, and he had obviously done something <laughs> similar last week. And you're just, and actually, when you listen back to it on, on, on our TV and the wee sort of replay of it, when it shows you at pitch level, it's an unbelievable strike. And when he picks up the ball, everybody's shouting, hit it. And that's exactly what he did. And unsavable. And, you know, he's rescued a point. If it had been the winner, it would have been even better. But still, you've got to, and you've got to give him enormous credit. And, um, two was, weeks uh, in a row, Linda. Two yeah. weeks in a row, the boys done it. Yeah, Kevin De Bruyne yeah, he says he was copying, and good on you, Abby, because um, you know that young guy, he's, he's not, you know, exactly, you know, set the hair of the light up here, Ox, but he's got that in his locker, and hopefully we'll see some more of that in the closing games. Yeah, yeah, Bridge, you had a good view, mate. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. When I start to cough, my whole memory goes. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, just roll back a wee bit, please. You had a good view of the goal. Yeah, yeah. Fabulous goal. Fabulous goal. Yeah, and then after that, we had a half chance, and the big Dessers would have hit the target, and you never know what would have happened. But uh, the game sort of petered out, and the whistle went just as we, we thought we could maybe grab a winner. So. But the boy, the boy's goal was, was utterly fantastic. It was, oh, it was a, a great, great goal. Great, great set of play for the Rangers. They, they was really pressuring them, and they were there uh, in the in that area there for oh, easily, easily half a minute to a minute. Uh, and oh my God, the boy did the same again after he did that last week. My God, what a fabulous goal! Good, a goal could suit any game, any game. Yeah, yeah. Win it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So come back. I mean, I think. The majority is would have took that at half time, Linda. If I'd have said to you at half time they would score another goal and we would they lose, you would have took that, wouldn't you? Oh, definitely, Ox. The way how badly we had played in that first half and you just thought, are they going to any of them going to be able to raise their game? You know, there was only as you see Butland and probably Sterling that got pass marks. And I know we've got the substitutions to bring on, but you're looking at the bench and some of these guys are tra- are recovering from injury. They're coming back from injury, and um, I just I still can't believe how poorly we played in the in the, the first half. But you're talking to family. You're probably talking to people at the game as well. You guys, and you're thinking, is there's no is there any way back for us? So yes, you would have you would have uh, 
absolutely taking a draw. Although it is, it is still very disappointing that we didn't win the game, Ox. It was a great chance to go and, and really put a marker down. But certainly I would agree with you that half time I'd absolutely have taken a draw. Right, but we may agree his phone lines on. We've talked well, enough. But... Yeah, absolutely. I'd like to hear some of the guys, see what they've got to say. Uh, and girls, you know. Uh, yeah, so. yeah you, always, you always like the girls coming in. Let's hear from you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why don't you give us a call on 0141 356 1972? It's your show, it's your platform. Let's hear from you. Right, OK, a couple of things. Um, uh, Liam turned up, met up with Big Stevie. Stevie welcomed him and uh, I think he had two high busies in the chair to push him in, but that's another story. But anyway, so Liam met up uh, with Stevie. Stevie introduced him to the boy if he go bathrooms, a, a friend of Stevie's, and I hope that Liam enjoyed the match uh, and we might hopefully maybe hear from Liam this week. <laughs> uh, could have picked a better game. You won a ticket for Linda, right? Yeah, it's exciting, if, if if not nerve-wracking and every emotion under the sun for everybody. Absolutely, Ox. Yes, yeah, so and we'll, well, by the way, we'll get a final total together, we'll get it sorted out and we'll let everybody know that we'll, and we'll, we'll post the donation online and people can see what we sent to the Emmy Smiley Foundation. Um, so uh, thanks to everybody who took part. We didn't know how to do it and it worked out well. We went, picked the number 56 for obvious reasons, and they were all sold out. Bridge man, good effort for everybody here. Fabulous effort, fabulous effort. Most assuredly. Well done, everyone. Well done. Yes, well done. Well, well done to Liam, and well done to Big Stevie, and thanks to everybody at Go Bathrooms, yeah. Something that started in a banner, um, the relationship has just grown, grown, grown. Yeah, so listen, uh, well, I've got a, another scoop. Yeah, I'm no one for spreading stories, as you well know, Linda. No. <laughs> However, you've got to picture the scene. So it's a, a crowded bar in the centre of the Glasgow and there's some well-known Rangers supporters gathered together and there's t- Rangers supporters all around us at every table. And it gets to three o'clock and people get their phones out and they're checking uh, football scores to see how their curtain's doing. So uh, we get to about quarter past three, quarter past three, quarter past three, and disaster. Southside Super Six, the, the better day, the 2 to 9 chance were 2 nothing down. <laughs> well, the roar that came through your table, uh, there was a lot of people there, I may add, but the roar of laughter uh, was magnificent. But I'll leave it with that because there's a second and then a third part to the story. All right? Oh. <laughs> Listen, the all fairy tales, this one has got a happy ending. Oh, fantastic. All right. <laughs> and let's just say all bear was a big bad wolf. Mm. All right, I'll come back to it. I'll come back to it. So come and join us. 0141356-1972. Give your thoughts on yesterday. Uh, where to go wrong? Um, the people that I was talking to. Uh, as you see, friends and family, I wonder. The, the two people who were getting the most criticism, there was a lot. Uh, I didn't enjoy Tom Lawrence's performance yesterday. I thought he was poor on the ball. You know, he had a chance to make things happen and it just wasn't happening for him. I never understood how Campbell didn't start the manager uh, with have his reasons, but uh, Lawrence, I didn't think it was a good game. But the two players who were getting the mess, if you like. Oh, I'll say the word stick. But two of our very experienced players, Tavernier and Wilson. Bridgman. Yeah. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, I, I, when you say Tavernier and Goldson, uh, you know, I thought, the second half, I thought both of them were excellent, to be honest. I really do. Uh, the first half, I don't think they were that good. So, I uh, second half, was it, the game of two halves, as they say, if that's what you're meaning, as a context of the question. I think that the second half, well, we were just excellent. Every single player in the Rangers team was just excellent in the second half. So yeah, we were good forward. To goals, so we had to ask to defend against their, the centre forward to come on. 
the first thing he done was right doll me. Right yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just, I think it's, I don't know what to think, to be honest. Well, can I just, uh, on that, on that, can I just hark back to what the bridge man's been saying for a number of years? Please, get us a centre half. I like Goldson, I've not got any. Well, oh, Goldson's been a good servant for his mate. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, please, get us somebody that's not going to get ragdolled or bullied. Please. No, they're not going, it's not going to happen this season or, or next season even, I don't think. But that's where they need to target. Somebody about six feet, five, six feet, six. Well, That'll I, be me. I, I don't think that is the issue, but I think what we need for back line is their pace. The game's changed. We need, we need pace, 100% right. We're so slow, it's unbelievable. So slow. Wonder. Yeah, I, I just think Connor Golston's gone through a, a, a period of time just now where he's just not really, he's not playing well at all. Um, when you look at we've been conceding really poor goals, particularly since the turn of the year, um, there's been a couple of times where he's just not played well against a centre forward in the opposition team. We're not just talking about Celtic, we're talking about the other teams in the league. He's lost poor goals. Um, you think about the, the 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 two Aberdeen games. He's caught twice there, two separate games. Um, you know, and and I thought he, I thought both Tav and Golson were relatively poor for the whole game. Albeit, you've got to give Tav credit for stepping up and taking the penalty. But I didn't think Golson had a, a, a overall. I thought he was very poor for for the whole game, Ox. No, the, the vast majority of our starters were poor, but they were the guys that were getting raised to the flag, the, the people I was speaking to. Well, it's all about opinions. It's all about opinions. Anyway, we'll be joined by Stuart. Evening, Stuart. How are we doing, bro? Ah, no bad, no bad. How are you doing all right after, after that? That was something at the weekend, honestly. I think I'm still behind the couch, honestly. It was just a nightmare. <laughs> it was a nightmare. What a nightmare party. I mean, this referee, man, I'm telling you, I thought he had a nightmare all round. I really did. Folks, yeah, I had a good game. It was measured. It was this. It was that. You know, the first thing that really annoyed me about it was the Carter Vickers thing kicking the ball away. That was a that was a free kick all day long. You know that? It was just that. And when what do you call it? Silva got the penalty. That was a goal scoring opportunity. So he should have been sent off. Uh, I, don't, I don't. I don't think, think so. Think, you don't know. You, They've changed. This is what we were talking about earlier. I don't know Aye. if you want a red card anymore, but it can be a second yellow, I think. We'll try to get That's it. what I mean, a second yellow, but he'd already been booted. Yeah, I think, yeah, not a red. But it ended up with, with the second yellow, which obviously sends you off the pitch. Well, the, the referee, uh, there, was, uh, there was two penalties. He missed the two penalties. There was a goal that we scored that he had caught the VAR should have been chopped off. But he's going Absolutely. to see the honour that he made a clear and obvious error. I don't know if he did. So there's three decisions that he had to go to VAR. So VAR's not there. He's got the three big decisions wrong, mate. And that's with uh, all the yellow cards and potential red cards he missed, mate. I know. I was, I was, that was so frustrating. But I mean, I was frustrating watching the team in the first half. Nightmare. But to watch that referee performance day, that just, that just rubbed salt into the wounds, really, for me, honestly. Really, I mean, the selection of the the right and all that kind of thing, the way they were set up. I mean, was that based on player availability? Maybe no one to take a chance on, like, see my Matondo, the hectic pace of the game at the early stages. I think he got his tactics wrong. I thought if he had set selection issues with, like, see my and Matondo, no one to get them to start with and get a good start, he should have really blocked things up before that. Rather than Celtic in the midfield, we were getting overrun in the midfield all the time. That first half, the folks here are Celtic were great. You hear it on the telly, but no, we just allowed them to play. It was just, we just allowed them to kind of play because we're actually what playing with nine men to start with, you know. What I seen <clears> yesterday was uh, how do I describe this? Right, so we've got our back four. If this makes any sense, Stuart, and Lundstrom's coming. To, Lundstrom's coming in beside the two centre halves. Diamond mm-hmm. is in front of him, yeah? Yeah. And then Lawrence is in front of him, Medessa's in front of him. Yeah. So you've, you've actually got like a, an eye shape, yeah? Uh, so mm-hmm. on that base either side, they were just running them up. So the shape was all right because Lawrence was in the side were two centre-halves. 
and uh, we were playing like an eye shape that I'd never seen before, and it's poor because uh, Diamondi and Lundstrom have got to come as a two and cover the ground when you play that shape. They've got to go side to side and work together in tandem, supported by Lawrence, who I didn't think done either. So there, nice yeah, and there, that that's what I think caused the problem. Aye, uh, I thought he was. I thought Lawrence was there. I mean, why did he no start Campbell? He's maybe no fit enough. Sima and Matondo in the same boat. If he'd started it with them and they maybe got injured, they're injured for the next six games or seven games or whatever's left. So he's maybe playing with that kind of attitude. So if that was the case, he should have kind of blocked up the midfield a bit better until he had time to bring these people on that could make the difference. If himself were always going to press like the way they do, they were always going to do that. And with the conditions, as Bridge says, with the wind blowing like mad eh, down the way, a pass back to Butland was not any good idea. So they should have played the long ball to start with and just try and kind of ease their way into the game like that after that first kind of disaster with Tav. I don't know what he was playing at there, to be honest with you. He seemed to stop and look across as if to think, I'm saying to myself, what are you looking at? Just get into the ball. He, was still, he still had control of the ball, the situation. And I, I didn't care why. I just, I just don't know what he was playing at. As you say, he had an absolute nightmare. <laughs> to take the penalty the way he did, absolutely brilliant penalty. But you know what as well? When they got that penalty, I looked at O'Reilly and I thought, this guy's totally bricking it, totally bricking it. And I thought, when people are bricking it like that, they take the easy option doing the middle and just this leisurely run up. I thought, I'm saying to myself, Butland, I could see him wanting to go one way or the other. I thought, this is going doing the middle. I just felt somebody, it. Somebody has to get a hold of Jack. Uh, he's for the penalty. That's the one of the weakest points he's given. Linda, come in on all Stuart's points. Hi, Stuart. How you doing? Hi. I'm uh, good, Linda. I'm good. I'm good. I'm oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Stuart, see when you're thinking, see the the starting team. I think um, you're right about the fact that he he doesn't like to start players that are coming back from injury, doesn't he? Not. He, he's never done it. He likes. He seems to like to bring them on. But the reason Scott Wright started was spot on. What you said. Um, we read Van no making it. And he's not got any confidence in Barisic anymore. And that's quite a sad indictment for Barisic, isn't it? So he Definitely. put Sterling there and, and he started right because he's the lack of options, you know. And then you're thinking at, at half time, because it's gone so wrong, you're just thinking, I wish he had just started the players that were coming back from injury and got an hour out of them so that we were still in the game. But I suppose, Stuart... We bring in Sima and um, Matondo on later on. It worked out okay for him, but it didn't look like that at half time. <laughs> no, but the, the thing is, when I, I, I'm not criticising the manager here. I mean, it's easy for us to say this yeah. and that. We didn't care in the situation with the, the training and how they're feeling. And what you didn't want is mere injuries going into the last six or seven games. So I'm not criticising him. He'd he done the job at half time. He really blitzed them and he got into it. And, for, for, I'm thinking of the Park Heat game. Taylor up against Sima, there's no contest there. I mean, that's a that's massive. But yeah, thinking into the future, he that's thinking into the future. He had him roasted, what was that? Sorry, he had him roasted, didn't he? He was terrified. You seen Taylor's face one time. He was eyes was bulging out. You see, as if to think, what the hell's going on here? You know, he just couldn't control a big guy like that, imposing guy. Where one sort of thing, he shrugged him off the ball as if to think so he's like a bear. You know, I just kind of brushed by him. I'm thinking, aye, I, I, I were all disappointed. Aye, it could have been a lot better. It could have been a lot worse, day. Eh? Can you know what I mean? It could have been a lot worse. Would but you have took that, the good thing is, that half time, Stuart? Sorry, what was that? Would you have took that at half time? Oh, aye, aye. See, after, no, even half time, even before the kind of second goal went in, I thought, you're just kind of in the midfield. I mean, he could have changed it after 10 minutes, to be honest with you, because you just didn't see Lawrence at it. it just, maybe it wasn't support for midfield. I think that was a big part of it, too. So it's, it's hard to criticise them. They were all kind of, apart from you're saying Suter and uh, Sterling, maybe they were all under 5 out of 10 for me. And they were, they were maybe a 7 if you were lucky. Butland, maybe about a 6. But the goal that they go after we go, they're setting the 2 2 draw after they go to their goal. He actually, Suter was at fault because he was, he used to be looking at that man. Seema was actually covering the boy at the back post and he could, he could see the danger and he tried to step in to help him. It kind of confused it a wee bit. 
I thought the boy had a kind of sweet shot, just like lawnmower sort of shot, right along the thingy, just slipped under the bottle. I could have got that, but it's, it's one of these things. It's just one of these things. But, uh, I don't think Shooter and uh, <coughs> Sterling were brilliant, but I think Big no, Pitch. No, no. You know? I, I, they, I, were, I, they were better players. Hey, Bridgeman, any comment, mate? Yeah, sure it's saying there. By the way, he's not saying anything that we, we've never thought of or never even said ourselves. I do think, um, my honest opinion is, uh, we had a terrible game in the first half. And some of our players were actually roasted in uh, midfield and defence. Uh, they looked a lot sharper than we did. Uh, but I think John Beaton, uh, he just, to me, kind of reverted to uh, cheating Beaton. <laughs> and that's the way I think of him. I don't expect anything from from him. But believe it or not, I actually applauded him. <laughs> he gave us a penalty. I actually did. I don't know why. So I, I think... Well, remember, sure. remember, Bridget, it was the him that gave us a penalty. No, it was VAR. But all, all I'm saying I, is that he, he came out and he, he gave it and, and he took the yellow card away. But that point there, just as we've said, just as Stuart said, that should have been... An, that, should have, that yellow card should have been reversed. Uh, for that and given to the other player because he was he obviously saw a foul obviously saw a foul because of a penalty so he's already had a yellow card so he should have got a yellow card for a for a penalty you know stopping the man for getting a goal 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 scoring opportunity definitely I got got him off the park but it's not going to happen I just think some some parts of the game I just cannot believe uh, what happens against the Rangers it only happens to me it always only happens against the Rangers but. I think uh, Stuart's right for that that incident there. Absolutely spot on. So Stuart, um, uh, the manager, as much I think maybe didn't get his starting lineup uh, with fully fit players or whatever, but the substitutes who, who come on, Campbell influenced the game, Seaman influenced the game, um, Matondo influenced the game. Uh, who else come on? Uh, Balligan didn't he? he was going long enough. Uh, yeah. I thought Dowell, who was a total uh, left field for me, Stuart, then Linda came in. I thought he'd done all right when he came on as well. I thought so. I mean, again, I'm not going to criticise him too much for the the Matondo, the the, the, the can't ball sort of thing. You know what I mean? The big guy, Seema. Because you don't know, we don't know how fit they are. But what he doesn't want to do is jeopardise them for the, the future. But what I will say, absolutely 100%, I'd play ball again. I mean, Goldson was having a, a nightmare, I thought. I just thought he looked edgy, didn't look right. And I thought that was affecting Lundstrom's game. The way he was passing the ball, it was like, it wasn't smooth, it wasn't a true sort of thing. All right, he could hit a no bad long ball at times, but that wasn't a game for the long ball out to the wing because they were kind of, they came what they were going to do. So for the future, I would leave Goldson out and say, look, we're putting ball again. And I mean, you could look at the next game, you could look at whatever game. But you're looking at why the key games is going to be at Parkhead. So this is a good test for us. I'm, 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 I was disappointed, I have to say, but I'm no despondent with it, if you can, what I mean. I thought that could have been a lot worse. It could have been a lot better. But we played with who we had, and that was the best team. These players must be shown some in training to get that. And you heard what Clement said at half time. He went in and says, I don't recognise you. I don't know what you're doing. You know? So... <laughs> You'd love to be a fly on the wall in that dressing room. You wouldn't be happy with your big staring eyes, I'll tell you. But <laughs> what, I'll also, what, what I'll also say is, the pressure on beating to the other side, the man came up, the pressure on him and the papers was massive. And with this letter that they're putting in about the penalty, that's that's no for the new, that's for the next game at Parkhead. They're playing this long game. The long game's that's maybe three or four that's weeks. And we can see right, we can see right through it. We can see right through it, and uh, it's it's not the first time, and it'll not be the last time. Uh, they're co-ops in the media, they're co-ops in the media. But I wonder if they'll be so. Uh, they'll all be sending letters. Uh, but the biggest story is Brighton uh, today. Anyway, definitely. So, Linda, uh, just before we go for the tune, so you pictured the soon crowded bar. Uh, Super 6 has not gone well uh, I sent one text just to inform people in case they'd missed it uh, we get to half time there's a lot of jesting and joking and uh, Big South side if I'm honest he's taking a bit of pace however however, the big man bounced back he's got two other lines on 
and um, they've both doing extremely well, extremely well. Uh, so he's having the last last laugh as we move on. I'll come back to it because there's more to the story, Linda. <laughs> Get on south side. He's, he takes all yes. this stick very well, Ox, doesn't yes. he? Yes, oh, he was taking a paste, in, but he was handling it very well. Right, so well, get yourself on mute because we're going to have a tune. Why don't you give us a call on 0141 356 1972. It's your show, it's your platform. Let's hear from you. We're going to have to get a mute button for your Christmas, Stuart. Sorry about that, I just got confused. Yeah, yeah, like. <laughs> it sounded, well, there's time to be quiet and there's time to speak, mate, yeah? You're not Listen, new, so. could, could, I, could I interrupt you? I've, I've just, you know what, it's somebody for the... Thailand loyal just come in and she wants to say something. Just give them a minute. Hold on, no, no. Right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. You ready? Yes. Here, here we go. Come on, come on. There's any band, no surrender. We are the people. Chalo, chalo. Bye bye. Kop kun ka. That's what put me off. <laughs> that's, that's what put me off. It was, okay, it was up the stairs listening to this range of radio. So, it's <laughs> part of Thailand. Thailand loyal, there you go. There you go. Brilliant, mate. Brilliant. Oh. Was that a good lady? <laughs> aye, aye. She's there for Thailand, is So, uh, oh. you know where we were? I, I know I'm diverting a wee bit. We were at the, the Rangers sort of museum on Thursday there. Right. I've been, I've been, I've been to the tour a few times there. The museum was fantastic, honestly. It was really good. I really aye. enjoyed it. Aye, I it was really great set years, up. The three years I've been, I think we've all, well, I, 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 I say that, I don't know if Bridget's been yet, but me and Linda have done it in, uh, I think we've all enjoyed it when we've been in the museum. Right. So, uh, where were we? I better go on with the next bit of this story, Linda, before I... Uh, yeah. <laughs> right, tell us, go on. So, because it lasts, it lasts as a fear. I'll, I'll give you this bit, the next bit. So the second half had started, things were going uh, really well. Still getting a bit of stick about the South Side Super 6. He then gets offered, uh, one of his bets, he gets offered 20, I think 21 to 1 his dough which was for to settle was about 30 to 1 yeah 
there's mm-hmm. about 20 minutes to go. The whole group were telling them, cash out, cash out. I'll come back to the next chapter, yeah? <laughs> right, OK, <laughs> where were we? I'll ask you, Linda, did Philip come on and get it wrong? We start at 11, in your opinion? Um, probably in, hind- in hindsight, he, he, he maybe did, Ox. Um, but you can see, obviously, why he did it, and it was the options available to him. Um, <laughs> but then, Ox, the, some of the players just played so badly that you don't know um, even any tactics that they were given. They just didn't seem to be able to do very uh, much, very well, Ox, I think. I thought, I thought as, as Stuart, as we've already talked about, the Tavern goals were the main topic of conversation, but... Uh, I thought Dessers worked hard, but took down a lot, and he, he only got one chance to get when he took it. But I thought the the guys that were meant to make the chances, right, Silva, uh, Lawrence, I thought they were poor, mate. Was that me, Ops? Aye, Stuart, on you go, mate. Aye, sorry, sorry. Uh, I mean, it's hard to disagree. The thing about Silva is it's a bit kind of theatrical. He's there and he's flashing about. He's got that kind of... I'm not saying he's a one-trick pony, but he cuts in that way. It's, it's getting obvious now. You know, that's when he got the penalty. He got the penalty after and after. I think people will, will catch on to that. Is he a £30 million player? No. And I, I think Clement did get a wee bit wrong there. I think he's playing him because he's a £30 million player and he's expecting more for him. And he's not getting any more for him. And I think that could... I think he's got a clear picture of the next six, seven games, he's got a clear picture of who he can kind of rely on, who he can. I'm not saying he got the team selection wrong, that's maybe what he had available that was fit and was looking good in training, but I'd say he got his tactics wrong and he never took account of the conditions where they were, where the, 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 what end they were kicking into. Because that wind was blowing, I wasn't there at the game, but the wind looked terrible at times, blowing the ball down. So it wasn't a, a good time for passing the ball back. Like say Tav, I think he was in two minds. The way that they will pass it back to Butland, or well, trying to, to, he got caught in two minds there, or where he took a, should have took a more decisive decision. So I'd, I'd say he got his tactics wrong more than he got the team selection wrong. Um, All right, fair enough, mate. fair enough. Anyway, we joined that's, that's, the David. Evening, David. Good evening, folks. Good evening, Ox. Good evening, Hi, David. Bridgeman. Good evening, Linda. How are we? Good evening, uh, David. Well, a lot of debate going on here, but this, this thing we've got to look at here is look at the big picture. We were lucky there. Because if that mob had walked away with these three points, we would have some job to catch them, and it didn't happen. So there's a lot of ifs and buts. We can analyse the game. We can see that was a foul, that was not a foul. The bottom line is we've still got it in our hands, folks. It's in our hands. I know we want to talk about the game because it was just madness. It was total madness. I actually seen, I was watching, I can't remember what it was. I was actually watching some of them leaving at half time outside the ground. And then after the, they were still leaving during that, not a lot, quite a few. And then they just scored and they were, they were running back again. That's how, that's how crazy that game was. But I mean, tactics, you could talk about all the tactics you like. They pressed us, and we can't handle a press. And that showed abundantly. And see all this we're talking about, the one done this and the one done that. I'm, I'm not wearing that. But it's the same for two teams. Yeah, and they were spot, all over. They're spot on, David. And it's no, it's no coincidence that both teams struggled in the same end of the park and five out of six goals were scored in the same end because that was the influence of the wind in that area. But they had the press we did in the Oaks. We did in the second half. Bridgeman. Oh, Linda. No, um, you're, you're right, Ox. And, and Davey, you know, to a certain extent, you've got to adapt to the conditions, but certainly um, Ox has got a point there. And there's quite a lot of people, particularly that were at the game, David, when, you're, when I, I was only watching it in television and I asked Ox um, before the show, did he think the wind make a, made a difference? Um, but, in, but in saying that, uh, David, the manager didn't blame anything like that. He just said he didn't recognise the team in the first half. Exactly. I'm not going to 
David, when you're, you know when you're playing football, it's always good to be one that you're back. <laughs> it's always good, unless you're on forward and you're a, bit, you're a wee bit freer because the other team's getting the ball, getting the wind in their face. And it's, and it's the same with you. In the second half, the ball wins in your face and they've got the ball at their back. And that's exactly the two halves there was. You know, you a half that was just a uh, murder polis for a win against their defence. Uh, yeah. And of course, in the second half, it was the opposite. Uh, so I, I, don't, I don't say the weather is. A, I've always said the weather is the biggest leveller in any game. But with Rangers and Celtic, it's hard to decide what's the best leveller because you look at the two halves and you can see the weather affected both. As far as I'm concerned, and it's quite simple. Other than that, we were terrible in the first half. When we were the one that were back, we were far better, far better. Hi, right, David. Um, I, I, everything's it's a roller coaster yesterday because you're up, you're doing, you're disappointed, you, and you're disappointed that first half. Let's be honest with, but even even accounting for the one, the schoolboy errors and the, the the lack of the lack of thought and the, the lack of poor passing or the lack of passing mm-hmm. at times. Mm-hmm. Well, it was poor. Because they were pressing. That, so that was their game plan. They'd done it again. They'd done it the last time at Bybrook. And Beal was there. That's the way we played. That was the way we set up. And they were all there was like a rash. And it was just... And they, I mean, I'm not, I'm not buying this thing about the wind. You're a professional football player. You can play anywhere. You, that doesn't make... The wind doesn't make you that many mistakes. And we made dozens of them. And they were all pointing fingers at, oh, it was him, it was him, it was him. It's a combination of everybody just wasn't there. The races in the first half, guys. Bottom line. Uh, I will have gave two players pass, well, maybe three if you can count the goalie. Pass marks the first half, that was Suter and Sterling. The rest of the, the rest, the other eight outfield players. And maybe Dessers, maybe a spot on five because he's his effort, but the... The, the rest of them, I, I, they were all under five for me, if I'm being honest, Linda, in the first half. Yeah, but the degree, Ox. And, I mean, I think Dessers, we know, you, you know we've, we've had to criticise him in the past, you know, some of his performances and the chances that he's missed, but he, he, he did put a lot of effort into the game. I thought he, he did he did okay, but, but, but Davey's right about their press, because that's just the way that they play. Um, and and quite frequently that's the way that they play against us and, and they do it well but when you look at our press Davey there was times in the first half where Dessers was up trying to press on his own but I don't know where Wright and Silva were and Lawrence because we never got that right at all so we <laughs> they were just getting time to pick their passes and, and play well Davey and we let them yeah. do that Yeah you're right Linda you're right you know, it was frustrating, David. It was frustrating because even when we did get the ball in the first half, we, we, we just simple passes we were going astray, mate. Eh? Like that goal there, yeah. we were, that knocked a window. Everybody, Aye. Oh, they everybody they just hit the deck after that. Aye. But the bottom line is, how many how many teams in the past going back months we done back could have came back to two nothing doing against that mob. That's the good thing. I'm tell you, I'm I'm over I'm over the bridge, man. Get a centre half. I, I'm not going to start naming names, but that guy, a centre half, he's over the hill and far away, as far as I'm concerned. When your legs go, your legs go. You know that, David. Stuart, and you come. I know. I agree with what David's saying. The centre half situation. He's, he's been like that. He's been. Board teetering on the brink, shall we say, and he's kind of teetered there, the brink now, a bit like Barisic. You just see him dying. You know what I mean, Goldson's pretty much the same. Here's a, here's a question for you. Here's a question for you. I mean, Maida Rose Tavernier, who, who's, who would you say is the best defensive right back in the Scottish Premier? And I've got a question beyond that. Would you say Tavernier's up there, the best defensive guy in the, the Kenny Premier right back? It's not the strength that Tav's getting, but he's been okay defensively this season. But what you're saying is, has he lost? Has he lost the quarter yard? And then he's no. No, no, no. Not my points. No, that's what I'm trying to say. Is I look at Livingston playing Celtic. Maida's up against the Livingston right back. He's not got the same effect as he got against Livingston sometimes as he's got against Rangers. Tav was terrified of that guy, 
So what I'm saying is, you've got your living stands, your mother walls, your hips, or your hips. They always seem to kind of handle my idea a bit, not all the time, but it seems, it seems to have this game, this kind of sort of thing where Tav, Tav kind of stands off him a bit and lets him run towards him. And I don't know if it's the tactics or something, it's maybe just Tav's losing a wee bit more as well. But if you could stop, like, say, Maida, because no match was coming down the right. It was the left-hand side that was coming down. So we need to bear that in mind for the future. Do you put Sterling in there? Because you've got to get past Sterling like he was getting past Tav or the potential to get past Tav cutting in. There'd only be one winner there. It's just a pity yesterday we numbered 11 Sterlings at times. As you say, it. Goldson, I would, I would put Balligan in. Give Goldson a rest, say him, look, son, we're, we're taking you to the game now. We've, we've played this, can I just get Balligan in against Dundee and see where it goes? Balligan's good for these kind of games. It would have been perfect for that game. You know, that Goldson going up for that kind of heater and he kind of shrunk a bit and he stuck his elbow out and I mean we would be shouting for that I guess uh, but uh, I firmly cheers, believe Goldson Cheers mate uh, Linda um, going back to David's point the, the, the main point I think he's making is similar to everybody else we just we never played well particularly in the first half yeah it was it was it was poor yeah they were pressing us they had the wind I get all that I understand all that uh, but it was still some of our decision making made it poor. That's the criticism Tavo get for yesterday. The first decision he had to make in the game, and he hesitated going for that ball and got it wrong because that's what caused him to rush. And then the other came. Yeah, and I think Ox before the game, as we said earlier, we were just saying keep it tight, don't gift any goals, and and it would be nice to see us take the lead for a change and put them under pressure. I mean, we've played poorly in old firm games, we know that, but I don't think I, I, I personally was quite shocked at how bad we were because I just thought we're in a really good position in the league, albeit we've still to win our game in hand. We need to beat them in a meaningful league game, old firm league game. We've got a brilliant chance, and this is a this is a game for us to just go out and win because we've been playing well under Clement. And I think it was how poorly we played Ox. It was quite a shock. If that makes sense. Aye, but I also take Davy's point that the 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 first minute sucked the energy of the team and sucked yeah. it. I'll use the word confidence, Davy. So I'll tell you what, I think there wasn't many pies getting sold after a couple of minutes. <laughs> yeah, they, were, they, were puke, they were puking them up. <laughs> no, but my, my take on the second half is I know we're all talking about the conditions, right? Apart, just take the conditions out of the equation. They are 2 nothing up. This is only my, my version of it. They're two not up. They're not going to come. They're just sitting in, and we are getting a chance to go into the top of them, and they're going to get us on the break because we are, we were wide open. They, you never seen them how it on the second half because they had two goals in front and they felt confident enough the way we were playing. We could we could see this out, but it, unfortunately that didn't happen, and we managed to come back and it's always a point out of that. The yeah. controversial decision by the referee, you know, when we were through, when we were, when, when we thought we were equaliser through Dessers, uh, and it was quite chalked off. Very controversial as well. These are the things that were happening yesterday and uh, Sunday. So it's very difficult. I would suggest it's very difficult. I don't think. Uh, I think there were three or four people. Uh, uh, and, and they were shocked at the a the conditions and the a the how poor they were playing because. Some of them tried to make passes, for instance, a cross-field pass, and you could see the, the way they were trying to put it, but the ball never got there. It was rolling along the grass, and you can just see it turning. You know, it's, it's amazing. That one from uh, uh, Diamonde, it, it must have been a 30-yard pass he made just straight to the Celtic player. Obviously, didn't they mean to pass it to him, but he did. You know, these things were happening, and it's strange, very strange. It's changing the second half, of course, changing the second half. Because we had the wind that were back and we put a lot of pressure on them and they cracked. Simple as that. They cracked. So I'm, I'm very happy. I'm not going to criticise too many people for too many things other than we saw where 
Some of the stuff was pretty bad. I've just said one. Uh, we saw Tav dead slow, caught three times uh, by that. But uh, that that the, 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 the Amida Amida or something like that. His name is. I can never remember his name. But you know, the, the boy's fast as a light. It's like lightning. He caught he caught Tav three times. And I thought, I don't Tav, know. I don't. I think he's re- he's quicker than Tav Bridge, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm saying that. He's absolutely. I, mean, I don't think he's near big seaman in a race, but what I will say is, what he does is he does a game and it's a piece. So, yeah. Tav, who's an experienced player, you should recognise who he's playing against. You're not going to get time to the ball, he's going to keep snapping at you. That's his game. So, I don't know how long it took for Tav to realise he's in a game and he better snap out of whatever, whatever illusion he's in. Get, this is a game against them. Get on with it. And he did, he did. Fabulous penalty, fabulous penalty. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to the fairy tale just there before we, we have the jingle. So, Linda, the cashier, <laughs> he's been advised by his financial advisor. <laughs> you quoted cashier, yeah. His other <laughs> bet, the Super Six has fell like a stone. The crowd are paying. You've let us down again, we're all on. Uh, he's, he's hugged up, he's, he, he's celebrating, he's got two bets. Once the, one fell like a stone and he's got this cash out. We're on. Everybody's advised him. You know, the, 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 there was people coming for you all the, this massive bruiser we were in and saying, look, cash out, cash out. Yeah. Well, pride before a fall. Yeah. No, I'm going for the big money. So the thing claps like a stone, but the story's not finished. Oh, God. <laughs> There is a happy ending, you did see. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> Potentially. Oh, yeah. so, they all chipped in and So, no, 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 no. So, the big man's, uh, I've rolled up a wee bit. The big man, three bets, Saturday, with everybody there. He's lost to it. He's had 21, 21 to 1. He's no, refused to take it. And he's left uh, sitting distraught. And um, to be fair, the people were there, including Fox, myself and Albert. We were trying our best to console them. Yeah, we were trying our best to console them. Anyway, we'll be joined by Bob here. Even Bob Chair. So I'm going to scoot away, away. I'll, just, I'll let you crack on, eh? I've got a couple of things today. Uh, yes, sure. Thanks for taking my call and all the best, guys, all right? Cheers, mate. Even Bob Cheers, Bob Cheers. Bye, Bye. Ruth. Bye. Even then, Bob Chair. How are we doing, folks? All right. Oh, nice. The telly on the radio. The people were there. Hey. The telly on the radio in the background. I don't know if it's you, Bob. Yeah. Oh, I haven't anybody's phone. I mean, I'll tell you what I'll do. Give me a second, though. I'll go and flick this television off completely. It's a straight red. It's a straight red, Bob Gia. Straight red. <laughs> Not better. Yeah. On you go, Bob Gia. On you go. Uh, Bob Gia, well, you're all right, mate. It's just, you. I like you. Oh, no. <laughs> Everybody likes me. Everybody <laughs> likes me except my ex-wife and my father. He took me <laughs> down to an orphanage and took me to Mingo. Right. <laughs> I... <laughs> Here we go. Post international break and we're back into the mayhem again. I thought Rangers were absolutely shocking in the first half yesterday. I thought we were lucky we didn't go in four and a half down at half time. I don't know. It wasn't easy losing a goal so quick. It shocked, everybody. It shocked me anyway. Shocked everybody. And to be on the park and be a goal doing at that time, I must have run right through the team went on. No, couldn't have picked ourselves up. We were lucky we were only three or four doing it half time or something. But again, it turned itself on the seed. We were lucky. Unlucky, I should say. Not to win the game. And uh, after that, I took the dog down with the water side, switched on the radio and listened to that radio snide something I never did. And if Keevan said once, once, he says, all Celtic need to do is, is, is to win six games and they're champions. Harm's going to phone them and say, well, all Rangers need to do is win five games and draw you and, and they will be champions. What I've detected over this weekend of the old firm game, I mean, you've picked the bones out of the new and up to now on the show, is why are these pundits getting away with their abuse of Rangers? Sutton, Michael Stewart, Keevans. The list is endless. They're getting away with it all the time, Ox, and it's starting to rankle me, and it's about to be starting to rankle the Rangers of the Rangers, Rangers Football Club and the officials. What do you think of that? Well, 
uh, I heard that Mr. Soonis, uh, the great Mr. Soonis, uh, mentioned that maybe Mr. Oh, Sutton, he who, because Aye. the the VAR team here, the Sky tr- commentary, is maybe throwing his bits in to try and influence mm-hmm. what they would think. Uh, however, Michael Stewart, Hugh Cavins, mate, I wouldn't you know, I wouldn't listen to them. I've no credence what they say. No. And I hope, no, I hope no. that I hope that Mr. Cavins is going to comment on the biggest scandal that's ever had Scottish football. That's all I'll say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, before they never commented on his show about um, non-football uh, football matters. We we'll stick to football matters. Well, it wasn't that ten years ago? So we've got to see what he knows now. Maybe he knows where he's letting on. Anyway, uh, I wouldn't give him history, mate. Don't listen, don't click, don't. No, uh, no, no, I know that. Don't let him like in your head, fuck you. Yeah. Don't like, let like him in like your head. We know um, the politics. We know the politics of Michael Stewart, yeah? Mm-hmm. Well, absolutely. Aye. So, what did Michael but Stewart say, Bob? Yeah. What did he say? I d- I'm going to be honest with you, but I didn't actually hear what he said. I'm no, I'm no contradicting myself here. But I, I seen the day on YouTube, although he was speaking about him, that he said everything about Rangers Football Club is totally negative. A hundred percent. I knew that beforehand. Oh, yeah. I knew that beforehand. And he, yesterday was wasn't he any different. Everything he said about Rangers Football Club is total negativity. For God's yeah, sake, we're a be, huge magnanimous. On at a time, boys. Sorry, boys. Sorry, boys. We're a huge, magnanimous football club, one of the biggest in the world. We can't be totally negative. Every football club got a side, got a negativity side, but we seem to have it worse than anybody with, with people like him, Mark Michael Stewart. Unbelievable. The amount of times he caught, when was it he caught, uh, when we played Hearts there? The last time we played Hearts, he was on the commentary team and uh, he contradicted himself so much, but he never said a decent word about Rangers, and he never does, and neither does Sutton. And my word to Rangers is, keep them out of the stadium. Don't let them in the stadium. That's the way That's they're the going to question. I was going to ask you that question. Is Sutton involved in all this as well? Of course, yeah, he, he was, was, he was sport, commentating. He? he was he's commentating on Sky yesterday. Bob, yeah, I'll be really honest with you. It's only my opinion. I think they would enjoy that. Yeah. I think they would like to be able to play the victim. But, uh, <laughs> listen, the biggest way we can is how we conduct ourselves and how we wonder and how we, we deal with things. And is to win these group of football matches because we know what they're trying to do. They're trying to put pressure on people and influence things off the field to get people decisions on the field. It's so obvious. Yeah, and and Oops. you're right, Bob. Yeah, the, the, talking about Michael Stewart. I mean, I I only heard what he said because I was watching the highlights on BBC, but I ended up muting him. But there, but there are certain people that have to listen to that because they don't have access to other channels, Bob. Do you understand what you're saying? Oh, sorry, Linda. Did yeah. you, you Linda, know. did you say you muted him or did you call him a muton? Because I know that might be a muton. <laughs> <laughs> a muton. Right. Listen, don't you be putting them <laughs> in everybody's mouth with, it, with yeah. these new laws that are in place, etc. Yeah, 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 I'm just saying you need to watch yes. yourself. You know what I mean? No, you I, can, I, I, don't worry. J.K. No, Rowley, loyal, spring your defence, yeah? Yes, yes. Ox, just my let's just, well under. Hi, th- thanks, guys. Ox, let's just say that my mute button was working because okay. um, I just I made right. sure. Well, you no. better show Bridge how it works. Oh, yes. Yeah. No, right. no right. Ox. Yeah. Ox, oh, yeah. he, he basically had just about apoplexy when when Rangers got awarded the penalty. Um, but you're right, Ox. What's happening is, is that these these guys have been brought in to be deliberately controversial. That's what's happening with Sky. Disappointing that they brought somebody like, like him on, but it's his job to do that. But you're right, Ox. He's also been told by certain members of um, certain clubs, people at, you know, in clubs that are telling him what to say and what to do and it is to put pressure on the referees and it's that part of it that really dis- it's disgusting to be honest with you yes yes when he uh, talks when he talks in five live he's talking about respect the officials when he's talking about the english league well i should yeah. remember that when he's talking about the scottish league and he, yeah. his fans anyway bob jeff we never played well in the first half but we're going to give you <laughs> a lot of credit for the way they responded after speaking to the manager at half-time? Well, we all know the cry, yeah. And, uh, so it, apparently, uh, Mr Clement had said to him, look, what you've given me in the last five months has been great, but you showed me nothing out there the other day in the first 45. 
go out and show me what, what you showed me in the last five months, boys. Let's go for it. Didn't forget there was a gale blowing yesterday, and that that affects the game. Okay, no it's the Davies. same for both. That's the no same Davies. for both. No Davies Hoos. Davies. Davies. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my, yeah, my I mean, yeah. Sorry, that's quite good. <laughs> no Davies. But uh, we, we were absolutely <laughs> terrible in the first half. We carried too many passengers. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to name them. You saw the game. We carried far too many passengers. Plus, we weren't playing with a natural left back. I'd love to have seen Sterling in the middle of that part. I hope Tati wouldn't have had the game he had if he'd have been in there, I can assure you. But that's hindsight. But uh, the next time we play them, we can't play as badly again, and I don't think they can play any better. So, I've got every confidence going to this park, kids. Oh, they've all got us beat three or four, nothing. You should have heard that yesterday, but I had to switch it off as well. I muted it in all under. I just have been muted it into the river port. But, um, <laughs> I'm telling you, do yourself a favour and don't listen. Right, so... That's, that. no, that's, that's, that's that. the best way. Right, right. Okay. that's it. Right. Sure, yeah. Davy, uh, we're critical of the team for the first half performance. And listen, we scored two goal, two good goals yesterday. Yeah? The third goal was a cracker, wasn't it? Oh, well, that's that's where you pay your money to go and see things like that. I hope it's a lot more of that's to come. And by the way, about my window house, I don't know if you were listening on Saturday. I was in on the show on Saturday and I told them it's windy. Because my flag blew out the windy. My Union Jack, I had it sticking out the windy, man. I turned around, it was gone. What day was that, Ended up in my neighbour's garden. What day <laughs> somebody nick it. Did somebody nick it, Davey? What day was that? By the wind. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, get back to the conversation. Davy, what, what day was that? That was Sunday. I know right. what day started. Okay. I was going to say, you don't know what day the week it is, but there you go. Uh, right. Can okay. I just mention something about the match itself when we get yes. back to the game? Well, we're talking about the disappointments. This is my two big disappointments. Obviously, the first one's waiting, the, the first goal. But the third goal they go at, I, I've never criticised Butlin, but I thought he was shocking at that goal. And that, that I thought that was it really done. But they came back again. But that was a high and a low. But wasn't it? It was two lows. But uh, he didn't cover himself in any glory with that one up. No, I think he should have saved it all day long. Uh, Linda? Yeah, I, I agree, Davey. And, you know, there's... He'll be disappointed with it. It's come through. The the two, the two Rangers defenders were, were, were shocking in that instance as well, Davy. How that ball gets through to Ida and they're not even picking him up. But I think Jack will be disappointed. It goes under him, Davy, doesn't it? And um, oh. I, I just think um, I, I think he will be disappointed. And I know he had a couple of good saves in the first half, but when he looks back on that, I think he'll, he'll think that he should have got it. Well, the wind didn't stop it going and did it. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. It was the, the wind did the factor that, mate. Yeah, it should have saved it, mate, all day long. Right, so uh, listen, just going back to the fairy tale, Linda. Right. So we've got to the end of the game and the, the, the cash shoot has went from the high to zero, mate. Everything's went peak tom. <laughs> so uh, uh, the banter's flying. You can imagine the, the South Side Super Six has been bet. There's people distraught. People can't kind of feed their families. And uh, so <laughs> we moved on to the following day. And Mr. South Side uh, picks up a couple of bets. He picks up a couple of bets. And he's went for a, a, a correct score. Two each. Man United Liverpool. Brilliant. Yes, he then reinvests some of his money. Unbeknown to him, because he's by this time he's had a few refreshments, uh, a couple of sarsaparillas, <laughs> and he wakes up this morning and his 2061 accumulator has stoted. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well done. So, anybody who wants their money back for the Southside Super Six or season? Right to South Side <laughs> Rangers. Well done, well done. Tonight, I'll be at Rangers Radio for a wee while. 
<laughs> so the moral of the story is them who laugh last laugh longest, Linda. Yes, Absolutely. so there's so much you can say about that. Well done, yeah, Southside. Good. Yeah, well done. Good man, he's a good man. He's a top man, mate. He's a top man. Top man. He's a rich man, I know. <laughs> I don't know about that, mate. I don't know about that. <laughs> he's richer than he was on Sunday put it that way yeah mm-hmm. uh, so good on him good on him so there you oh, go you uh, story. Aye. <laughs> aye the roller coaster I think that sums up the game his, his bet sum up the game it was a roller coaster bridge man eh? yes indeed yes indeed I have to say when I walked to obviously I walked to Ibrox very very happy with the final score because after after one minute of that game, you know, I didn't think we were going to do anything. And it seemed to get worse and worse. So at the end of the game, I thought, tremendously exciting, great second half, and we were well worthy of a victory if we could if we could have hold, held on. Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, if we could have just, you know, stick, stick, stuck on and, and, and did our business. Uh, and, you know, that wee chance we got at the end, maybe even two wee chances right at the very death, one of them had just sneaked in and just been wonderful. It would have been really a great day. That would have been a great day. Unfortunately not. Listen, Linda, uh, uh, aye, the second half performance, what changed it? Obviously, apart from Davies, who he didn't even <laughs> work out, his flag was blowing right. Uh, <laughs> uh, the wind, obviously, that, that benefit is this, but the, the attitude the team was spot on. Obviously, Seema coming on for right, it, it, the the threat and the pace and and the I'll say it, the braveness is, is so different now. Yeah, definitely, Ox, and we were able to put them under a bit of pressure at the back as well. We we kept a hold of the ball. We made some passes. Um, you know, you can <coughs> see the players' confidence as well when they got the, the when we got the goal and we got ourselves back into it. Um, I just thought you're right. Seema made a big difference. You know, Scott Wright is if everybody's fit and firing and and good to go, Scott would be would be quite lucky he can go on the bench. You know, but he, but the the manager's hand was probably forced there. But Scott Scott Wright is what he is, isn't he? I mean, sometimes he does okay, and you think is is he going to be able to put on a big performance? But but no, I mean, um, as you say, it was it was rightly taken off, although a, a few of them could have been subbed at half time. But certainly Seema coming on, Matondo, the energy. I thought Cantwell did well when he came on, Ox. I know that you know, he'll have maybe been disappointed that he didn't start as well. I thought it might have been a game for Todd to, to eventually take one with the scruff in the neck, you know. Um, but I thought he did all right when he came on. So the big difference for me was was us putting them under pressure and um, you know, and as I say, getting the getting the penalty it helped tremendously. Mm. Uh going back to Scott Wright, Davy, it's not the, the dog in the fight, it's the heart in the dog here. Well, I mean it's we've been talking about this for far too long. Hopefully we'll not be talking about it next year. Mm. Or maybe not even for the rest of the season, but I can't remember who brought it up, but it's so doing it who's available. I don't know if it was brilliant to say that I mean it's availability at the moment and uh, obviously that's what Clement decided to go for. Now this, this is a wee question I'd like to give you so do you think now after Sunday where do you think the balance goes? I, I think the, I think the thing is mate, you've just got to take it the, I've got a bridge man but it is a bridge man it's one game at a time the balance doesn't swing your way after Wednesday, bridge. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, uh, we we're going to keep keep going. Uh, the, the should be, should we say we we have got we've got our noses in front. If we if we win the next game, we've got our noses in front, and we have got to keep going. And we have to be just like the manager did at half time. He's got to do that at the, front, at the beginning of the game as well before they go to, to start the game. He's got to batter them if necessary. And get it sorted. Can make sure they're up to hundred percent because we can't afford any points dropped at all. That's what we can't afford. Any points dropped at all. We need to keep get our nose in the front and stay there. And let them fight. They've got to fight as well. So let's see what happens. And don't don't lose games. Don't lose any games. 
we can't afford we can't even afford to draw any of our games with fifty two. Uh, and it's got to happen. It's got to be happen like that. The man has got to make sure it happens. Yeah, um I gave you I think Wednesday night the, the we, we need to go and get three points. Hopefully we can we can score some goals, Linda, for obvious reasons, but first and foremost you have to win the match. Yeah, Alex, we do and we don't know what's going to happen with the game, with the weather that's coming in and what the pitch is going to be like. That's a whole discussion that's, you know, that I'm sure it'll rumble on in the next couple of days. But Bridge is right. We need to, it is just about taking one game at a time and people are already jumping forward to talk about, you know, the, the, the last old firm game, when it's going to be and we've got, to, we might need to go there. We, you know, we might at least need to get a draw, but there's, there's games before that. There could be a couple yeah. of twists and turns and, you know, like, I think it's three points and you move on to the next one. If we can get a few goals as well, because who knows what's going to happen with the goal difference. Um, but Bridgeman's all the way would do me nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Davey, here's a question I never I thought I'd ask you live on there. What way are you swinging? <laughs> 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 no, go I'm not getting any lights in my house. All right. That's a question I never thought I'd ask you. Yeah. No, but I tell you why, I know that I have not been guilty of, which I think a lot of people have been guilty of. As see, before the game, everybody's going, we get three points and then another two or three, we're five. You can't think like that. Know the way this league's playing out. You cannot go as far as that. And say, oh, look, we could be five in front here. And it's all changed again. Now it could be back to two. And if we don't win, uh, it could be a disaster. But as Clement always says, he, 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 I bet he never ever thought like that. Oh, we'll win that three points. We've got another, we've got that's just five. We can afford to drop some. No chance that guy's feeling like that. I have not felt like that. Mm-hmm. Because as Linda just mentioned, that, uh, that spot comes up. And we've still got to go to hard grounds, Ross County fighting for our lives, a lot of other clubs. So it's all, it's all there to play for. And the simple bottom line is, as we know, we win all our games. We'll win the yeah, league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. right. That's another thing I never thought I'd say live on the other box, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. You've said it. It's the first time for everything. It should be in my house, David. The guards on the inside of the window. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, I the road sweeper up the lobby. Um, well, obviously the the media, uh, you know, this is only Monday, and the, and the more and Wednesday morning they're going to make Dundee the equal of Real Madrid, and they know we went up there oh, early on the season. We won five nine. Am I right? Aye, that was the result five nine. And uh, we Rangers, we should be too strong for them. And if we get the two points, get the three points, sorry, that's us two points in front again. And the momentum's back with us. The momentum's back with us for the time being. And David's right in what he says. You can't think way, way ahead of yourself. Clement's right. Just take it one game at a time, try and get the points, and then move on to the next game. But we'll be the ones on Thursday morning, we should all going well. We should, all going well, have the two-point lead. Then they were getting recent years. That league's been over by February. All right? It's been over. We've all been sitting here. The news is conceding to them. But this year is different. They've got a challenge, and they didn't like it. And let's rub out of them on Wednesday night. We're getting the two points. If we were sure by a certainty, he won that game yesterday. And then never, because the Jets keep going. Never write the Rangers at all, as it was proved yesterday. Aye, and, and this this guy that we've got in, in charges, Linda, he seems to get the mindset of the support, doesn't he? He yeah. knows the expectations. Yeah, because I think um, he talked about the synergy, didn't he? And it was well gone. And he was absolutely right. When we lost the Aberdeen under Michael Beale, nobody would have ever thought we would have been in a title challenge. And he, no. he, is a, he did actually say as well that, that he hopes that the fans understand and believe that they will never give up you know he keeps saying that as well that he's desperate for us to keep with the team and everybody was there you know supporting the team at the end and you know when they walked down the stadium and they were you know applauding the fans and I know there was a couple of comments about 
you know, from the usual people about celebrating a draw. They weren't celebrating a draw. They were they were applauding the fans and thanking them for their support. That's what they do at, at every game now. Um, but I just think our manager, he gets asked about the league, doesn't he, Ox? He gets asked about so many games, the split and everything else, and he, all he says is he's focused on the next game. He's never changed his tune from that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's a top man, Bridge. Like, uh, every, everybody knows, for me, since the time he walked in, but just before he came in, he was my selection. Out of the ones that were, could be possible. I wanted him in. He came in uh, after he's got his feet under the table a wee bit and we're now looking smashing. Uh, unfortunately, if we'd, won, if we'd have won that game uh, Sunday, then the world would have been a, a rosy place at the, at the moment. But we're still there. I think he's absolutely outstanding as a manager. The best manager in Scotland by a long way. By a long way. I'm including that man that was there yesterday. Uh, Ibrox cheering up. Uh, no. And I, I can't get away with the guys talking about uh, Sutton and people like that. Rangers need to ban all these people. Don't I think mean. that's what they want, Bridge. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, I know, I know, pal. No, yeah. like don't listen to Don't listen to them and just laugh at them, Bridge. Uh, Davey? Uh, I don't Nicole. listen to scum. I don't listen to scum. I don't give them time. Yeah, I think I they, don't uh, them a Can I just mention a wee thing about we're talking about Wednesday's game? Uh-huh. I, my, I, my only concern, we're, I don't have any concern about your ability to go up there and play and beat them at football. But I watched the highlights of Dundee and Murrow, and that park is an atrocious. And God knows what it's oh. going to be like. We've, we've got a thunderstorm coming in tonight, uh-huh. and tomorrow. It was shocking. Ah, have you seen the players? There was more mud on them. And they had dead nails. You couldn't make how to make you the steps. It was shocking. That's my concern for Randy. Uh, that I part, was... I don't think, will be playable for football. Well, obviously, the, the underground conditions, the weather, don't affect the game, David, as you said earlier on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't compare I wrote to that, like, that place up there, man. Exactly. It's a cute patch. It's a factor in a game of football the surface and the conditions. Uh, but you're right, you're spot on and how how they haven't been sanctioned for the fast of nearly turned this whole week yeah. into. Because this game could be called after Wednesday if the rain predicted comes in tomorrow, David. You're spot on. Yeah. That's a whole different debate, Linda, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Also, um, would, that would be the five games or something postponed so far for them. Um, but I don't know, because I, I, I might be wrong, but my understanding was that, that, that this game will need to be played and there's a potential for it to get moved to another stadium. I don't know if that's true, but um, but certainly it is a level of rocks. And if, if it's got to be postponed because the pitch just is, is a quagmire, then so be it. We'll, we'll have to fit it in another time because it's very much a level. The, the trouble is, Linda, because of the fixtures, they wouldn't know who the bottom six was and they wouldn't know who the top six was. Aye, spot on, spot on. Yeah. So it would be it needs to be moved then, Ox. It needs to be it needs it needs to be moved to a venue that's got a playable surface. I just I just think the integrity look, and the whole thing short and they they deserve the look, look at the look at the options. The options is up the road at Tanadice. There's no V A R facility there. Look at the option along the road in, in, in Perth, at McDermott Park, Perth. That's a ploughed field and all. So there's there's not a lot of a lot of scope for a decent game of football on the surfaces that you see in the SPL. Eh? Just your spot. And you hear the constant complaints about about plastic pitches and quagmires that you're playing on. You're asking top class players to play on this, and it's, it's something's got to be done about it. This is a ridiculous situation. And there is a high potential that this game will be called off due to the weather conditions. So, Aye. congrats to the SFA, you've done it again. Well, I don't know, to be fair, it's the SFA this time. I think it's the league, and obviously... Well, uh, the league. What a mess. What a mess. What a mess. Uh, Mr. Doncaster will be congratulating himself. Right oh, he's a good old guy. You know, the ones again. But, I mean, Linda, you could have a, a, a mad situation with... On Sunday, Sunday after we go to Ross County, 
You don't know who the bottom six are. You don't know who the top six are. You can't announce mm. the fixtures. I mean, so the following uh, uh, weekend, uh, nobody will know if they're home and away. Yeah, the police <laughs> will not know who's home and away. Uh, what a state to get yourself in. It's, it's, it's embarrassing. Yeah, it is embarrassing, Ox. And as Bob Deere said, the, the state of the, the pitches, the stadiums, the whole thing as a product is it is it's it's mortifying. Um and, and that team, particular club as well, they're allegedly moving to another stadium, so they're not really caring about the state of their pitch, but they should have been warned or it should have been more sanctions against them and they would have the they, they might have put more money into their pitch. It's an absolute farce, Ox, it really is. Um, I know this is controversial and it probably won't happen, but how about you reverse it and you, and you say to them, well, it has to be played at Ibrox? Oh, I will. Again, oh, oh, oh. yeah, it would be interesting, but it's just integrity in the whole league. They've just shot themselves in fact. What a mess they've got themselves in. David, <laughs> I'm sure oh, what can I ask a question on that? I mean, it's a very interesting point. What do you guys think, if indeed it is a big torrential rain thing and they have to have to get that game cancelled, what, what, what do you think we should, we should be doing about it in the league? They, they can't even go on and on and on. So, I think every other week it's, it's a, the game's in danger. Or how many put two the pitch inspections out and things like that by the sound of it? Really strange. Really strange. I should give Rangers a three points. <laughs> Bill <laughs> said that. <laughs> right. You know, but it's just, uh, listen, right. it's just, it's embarrassing anyway. Well, um, <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, I'll come back to Saturday's game. There were, obviously, there was a lot of negatives and a lot of positives. You know, with the Matondo goal with the way Seema played when he came on and Dow that I didn't think we would see in Saturday. I didn't think it was a hope. And I thought he, he looked as if he could have something to offer. But however, I'm going to put you in the spot. I'll, I'll go first. I'll go to Linda first. Uh, who was your man in the match for Rangers, Linda? Well, oh, man in the match. Um, I would probably give it to Sterling. Sterling, yes. Yeah. Uh, David? No, God, you've got me in that one. If I was the only game in town, my tondo for his goal. The, the rest were very average. Mm-hmm. <coughs> uh, Bob, yeah? Well, I'm well under there. I would give to Sterling because the lad he was out of position and I thought he had a very steady game. <coughs> huh? He had a very steady game. Like, a good player. Yeah, I have to agree with that. Uh, uh, I think, uh, apart from the very first uh, touch of the, he's first ever touch of the ball when he, he actually fluffed it in it. I think his mistake on the ball led up to the, the ball getting pushed back to the goalkeeper and the ball keeper led on up the part and him scoring. Uh, he fluffed his game. After that, he came right on. I thought he had a smashing game. Uh, no, I have no complaints about any of our players, really, because, of the way, because I'm a very magnanimous chap. But yes, I don't have a problem giving it to Sterling. Absolutely. Right. Go for it. Yeah, I just think um, I, I see it. Uh, by the way, uh, obviously speaking to Southside a few times over the weekend, and um, we disagree on the Sterling where he should play. But I'm I'm far out of the Southside camp when it comes to <laughs> Big Lundstrom, uh, you know, because uh, I think age is going to be something that's going to be looked at when you get out contracts. We've got to learn, and maybe that was the trouble with the two boys. We've got to snow. We've maybe just. Held on a bit too long, Linda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, yeah, you, you can see where, where, where Southside's been coming from. And I think, you know, there's part of everybody that thinks, you know, perhaps we should be looking for a, a younger player in there. And and the thing about it is, is that the deal's got to be right primarily for the club as well. I know Lundstrom will be looking after himself and his family. Um, but you're right, Ox, it, it could be time um, that there's a few of them that need to be moved on. And it could it's possibly going to be players that have done really well for us as well at certain times, Ox. Um, but interesting times ahead in, in terms of signings, that's for sure. 
I tell you what's interesting. We'll just get this last question. Do you think there's any chance we'll see Red Van on Wednesday night if the game's on? Bob, you? Well, it depends on his injury and walk in the state of the pitch. Yeah. So uh, I don't think he will actually. I think you'll see Borna Barisic. I thought you should have seen Barisic yesterday, actually. Barisic's a seasoned international. Let me say something about, about, the, about the, the probable departures. If you're talking about Tavernier there, if Gerard wants him, they can have him and get the money together and get Nathan Patterson back at ASAP. Well, I don't know what happened the last time I watched Patterson, mate. Oof. Yeah, but um, I'm interested to see what happens with Red Van there. How, how far do we, if we're going to see him, you know, we, we need a bit of luck, one dinner. Eh? We, just, we can't we can't buy any luck, Ox. I would agree with Bob Jerry about the pitch as well. I, I just think Clement he's very reluctant to throw players in um, if they are if they're coming back from injury. And I know Red fans not been out that long. Um, but if if he's okay and sometimes as you've said as well, Ox, an extra couple of days it makes a big difference in terms of being able to play. Um, I just hope that we can get as strong a team out as possible. And it'll be interesting to see what he does with, with mm-hmm. Matondo and Silva as well, whether he, he throws them in at the at the start too. You know, a bit of pace and a bit of energy about them. Hi, hi. And obviously the conditions are going to play a part, Davey. Um, Wednesday night, um, okay. you see the quagmire. I've seen some of the pictures. I've not watched the highlights back in that game. Uh, but hi, it's um, young Red Van. I don't think... Gets called up late to the squad, Davey. Gets put into the team and gets an injury. We can't catch a break this year, can we? Well, it's just your grief. We've got to deal with it and so far we're still there we could be talking the league after Wednesday I've got a very um, well I could I, I, regarding Ritvan I don't think he's got a snowball chance of playing knowing that part if he's got a muscle injury right. that right. club will right. no risk him and I think right. that's what he's got I don't know if it's a groin or a tie or what but could it be groin <laughs> pain could it be groin pain <laughs> <laughs> You've been reading my mail. <laughs> Doesn't it play? can sit on top of my telly. Uh, right, man, right, my man up here. Do you think there's any chance? Well, obviously we're not uh, sort of privy to everything that's actually happening in so far as the uh, red man's concerned. I do hope he's fit enough to start because I would start him. Uh, I think he's a smart wee player. Uh, I don't know if, for instance, he feels like playing up on that, that quagmire of pitch. I don't know. But uh, whomever is going to play at left back, uh, I hope it's not Sterling. Not that I don't like Sterling. I think Sterling will be better used in the midfield or close to the midfield because uh, it's going to be a really, really tough, uh, heavy night. But the sound of things, but the sound of things, would be as good to do with someone. A, a good, uh, shall we say, a good fighting for it uh, in the midfield. That's what right. we've done. And, 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 right, we've reached that time of the evening. Last word quickly for yourself, Bob, Jim. Yeah? Well, hey, the Lord, we're going to win tonight. And for, this, is, this isn't the AC Milan we're playing on Wednesday. Dundee. Let's get the heat down, the sleeve rolled up, get into it, get the three points and back to the top of the league. Good night, everyone. Cheers, Bob, Jim. Yeah. David, my mucker. Yeah, thanks again for listening to me rabble on and uh, it's a pleasure to always be on the best show in town as usual and keep believing folks because we are the people so take care, God bless the Rangers Good night Yeah, always good to hear all day uh, Linda Yeah, great, great show tonight Ox um, good, good chatting about the game and Good to be on with, with Bridgeman and your good self. And as Davy says, um, keep the faith in three points. That's all we're asking for. So, good night. Bridgeman. Well, we're going to say, Oxford, a, mar- a marvellous show tonight. Really good topics uh, and a few wee <coughs> opinions that were, shall we say, somewhat unexpected. But I thought it was excellent. I thoroughly enjoyed the show. Thank you, Linda, for, for taking me through it. Uh, and of course the techie boys in the background for yourself Oxjer. can I just say to all the Rangers fans listening in all over the world 
Roll on Wednesday night. Here we're coming. Top of the league. Everybody, keep it going for the Rangers because the Rangers lead us. So it does. Right, OK. Uh, thanks thanks to Stuart. And, of course, Mrs Stuart who phoned in. I never caught her name. That was maybe uh, rude me. I forgot to ask. Uh, great to hear from old Davey and Bob. And, of course, London and Bridge for doing the show. Fox and old school boy for doing the technicals. The bag down. A big shout-out to my mucker, South Side. Well done, Biggie. Uh, thanks to everybody for listening. Rangers Radio will be back tomorrow night between 8 and 10. Talk about all things Rangers. Take it away, old school boy. <laughs>